Well, good morning, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I can see there is a lot of interest uh, on in the Italian market from uh, from many different places. There's of course people in Italy, but also all over Europe. And I say good evening uh, in case there is someone uh, connecting from Asia. We are going to begin this online session about lowering uh, levelized cost of electricity with bifacial PV in Italy and to talk about uh, bifacial PV, how it works, you know, how the projects are, are designed and how are they a good fit for Italy, what to take into consideration. We have three experts with us today who are going to talk about this with us and I'd like to ask them to introduce themselves so that you can get to know them better if you don't already. So, Francesco, can I ask you to unmute your microphone, please, and introduce yourself briefly to our audience? Sure. Thanks, Belen. I'm Francesco Emmel, and I'm Country Manager of uh, Longi for Italy. Thank you very much, Francesco. I'd like to also invite uh, Andrea Ferrata to introduce himself. He's one of my colleagues on the engineering arm of ATA. Uh, go ahead, uh, Andrea. Hi. Hi, Belen. Hi, everyone. Uh, so it's a pleasure being here uh, with also with Emilio and uh, Francesco today. I'm Andrea Ferrato and I've been working in solar for nine years. I've, uh, I've got experience as technical advisor and uh, asset manager in the past. And uh, now I'm country manager at uh, ATA Renewables for Italy and North European countries. Excellent. And last but most certainly not least, I'd like to invite uh, Emilio to introduce himself as well to the audience. Please, Emilio, can you unmute your microphone so we can hear you? Thank you. Good morning, Belen and everybody. Um, my name is Emilio Marconel. Um, I am COO of uh, PowerTIS. Um, I've been in the industry uh, for almost, well, actually more than 20 years now. And I've been doing uh, mainly well, development, consultancy, due diligence. I've been involved in M&A um, services in Europe. Africa, um, Asia, Americas, and special focus in, in Latin. Incredible what 20 years that you've worked absolutely everywhere. So thank you very much, Emilio. So as you can see, you have the point of view of the manufacturer of the panels, you have the point of view of more of the technical, independent technical advisor, and also you have the point of view of the developer. So you're going to be able to really understand, you know, this topic of bifacials from many different perspectives. So what I'd like to ask is uh, my colleague on the technical command, Valeria, to stop sharing the screen now so that I can ask our first speaker for the day, Francesco, to open your presentation and share it, selecting the presentation. And whilst Francesco prepares and unmutes his microphone, etc., I just have a few um, directions for you guys. Okay, so several things. This um, session is going to be three presentations uh, from Francesco, from Andrea, and from Emilio, followed by some time for questions. We'll do as many as we can. We'll see how many we actually have time for. And um, if you send them, send the questions through the Q&A box, which is at the bottom of the screen. Don't send them through the chat because then the chat, they get lost on, you know, all the chat and the introductions and then send them through the Q&A box so that we can uh, manage them more appropriately. So that's number one. Number two, I want to remind you that we are recording this session and that we will send you a link to the materials, which are the recordings. So you can watch it again, perhaps send it to a colleague who hasn't watched it. And also you can take a look at the detail of the presentations because our presenters uh, usually send them to us. And usually also the presenters put their email address uh, in, uh, in the presentation so that you can contact them thereafter. So, uh, Francesco, let me see if I can take your mute. No, I can't. You have to take it yourself. Oh, there we go. Yeah. <laughs> so I can see your presentation perfectly. Uh, I can hear you. So go ahead with your presentation. Thank you very much. So hi, everybody. I will give you, uh, you know, the perspective of uh, a module producer, which is Longi uh, Solar. Uh, as a uh, um, module manufacturer, you know, our way to um, we are 20 years old manufacturer with uh, more than 40,000 people, um, over five, uh, around 5 billion revenues in 2009. Just to give you a very, very brief presentation of ourselves. The reason why I'm talking here today is because our company, it's a wafer and module manufacturer, which is leader in the bifacial uh, technology. We deliver worldwide more than five gigawatt of uh, bifacial glass glass all over the world. Uh, this is, um, and this is um, what we 
are doing now for the for the future you know we are developing a brand new project which is imo uh, 5 with the power output that will uh, arrive to 540 uh, watt peak here you have the main parameters as you can see the uh, as you can image you know the efficiency would be um, very high we passed 21 percent uh, the main introduction we have done with this product together with other manufacturers to be honest because we uh, we share uh, um, our technologies to many others uh, that um, many other manufacturers that are joining us with the decision to go for the m10 wafer which is 182 uh, millimeters um, to do the standard design the standardization of this will help uh, somehow also to lower the LCOE because, of course, the manufacturers that uh, are, are going to join us will save costs in terms of uh, module production. Uh, let's give uh, um, just uh, a brief, you know, uh, look of what we are doing in terms of uh, optimization of our, our modules. We have made this fully uh, compatible with uh, compatible. Sorry with uh, all the inverters that are now uh, in the market. Uh, this means that also, as you can see here in the slide, to, uh, we are working uh, below, a little below um, uh, 15 ampere also when we have a bifacial gain, which is around 15%, uh, which is already quite high. Uh, Andrea, I know that uh, it will explain this more in detail later, so I don't go too much on the on the topic. And uh, the other uh, important things that uh, we make, we have uh, optimized the module size to um, um, to perfectly match with the um, trackers that we are now, uh, we have now available on the on the market. All this. Uh, when we turn this into numbers, because here anyway, in the end, we are talking about numbers, we just uh, make an investigation, you know, and uh, as you can see with the other technology, including our technology, uh, 166, uh, 445, that we still uh, have in the, in the market, uh, we, if we compare, you know, different uh, para parameters, including molecular efficiency, um, uh, VOC, uh, EMP, uh, we have the um, BOS costs going down quite a lot with our technology. If we compare our bifacial, which is the IMO 572C that you see here, or the IMO 566, which is the other model that arrived to power out with 495, as you can see, if we compare to the mainstream products that we have uh, in the market, uh, let me just give you the idea with the 495, which at the moment is very popular with the cell dimension of uh, 200, we have a minus 1.34% uh, uh, sorry, uh, per watt less cost. This means that, I mean, I don't have to explain to you what this means is of uh, uh, cost when we go on the on the megawatt side, uh, you know. Uh, reliability. This is the other important topic that to, we need to talk about. While we have um, we go uh, to uh, glass glass by Fisher, uh, we have tested largely tested our modes wide together with many uh, labs, as you can see over here and together with many of our uh, customers. And these are simply uh, reported uh, results of what we have in terms of uh, um, gain, bifacial gain. We go from 10% uh, sand Arabia to 20% uh, of white coating that we have in, uh, in China. We have a large number of installation and a large number of tests available about the reliability of our bifacial. So as we said, uh, as also Blend said uh, at the beginning of the presentation, just feel free to ask 
all the information you need about our project and about our installation. Uh, last but not least, uh, we have produced the doped gelling technology on all our modules um, starting from last month. The gallium doped technology reduced significantly the degradation of the modules. And we have introduced this on both uh, monofacial and bifacial. Uh, also on this, we tested largely before the introduction uh, into the, our production line, which I want to remember you, we are talking about 30 kilowatts production at the moment. Uh, we are the larger module manufacturer worldwide. And we have tested this technology on a very large base with the numbers, important numbers of tests. And we are uh, going to uh, commercialize this project from now, which have really low degradation if you compare it to uh, uh, borrowed up at the uh, technologies. Um, that's it. I mean, I'm, I know that my colleagues will go more on the on the details from our side, we can only, uh, let's say, optimize our product to be, you know, viable and uh, uh, compatible with the, all the technology that we have uh, available at the moment, including track, trackers and uh, uh, structures. Uh, what, uh, uh, maybe just last information, we, we have decided to go to glass glass uh, because of many reasons. One of the most important, anyway, is that we have the resistance on the trackers that is better, and we don't need to cover like uh, transparent sheet modules, for example, the um, uh, backside uh, to have a resistance which is comparable with the standard modules. So uh, it's also more reliable for the time being because we don't create shadow on in the back, so we don't have. Uh, problem of hot spot that can come out in the, in the future. I'm, uh, uh, to be honest, I'm ignoring the question because I suppose the answer to go uh, to, together with the other panelists at the end of the discussion, Belen. Am I right? Okay. Now you have to unmute your microphone. <laughs> you, you are right. You are right. Okay. You can see. <laughs> okay. okay. So are you done or are you still continuing? No, 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 I'm done, I'm done. Okay. I okay, don't want perfect. to go too long. I want to leave some space to the question because I suppose there would be many questions on. Yeah, there the are some end. questions already there for you. You can answer by text or you can wait until the end of the, of the, of the session. Okay, okay. Uh, next up is Andrea. Andrea, same for you. Uh, open your, your document and share it and your microphone. And yes, yeah. we have two questions already. They are very specific to your presentation, so perhaps you can answer them and for sure we'll get more mm -hmm. towards the end. Okay, and Andrea, go for it. Great. Okay, can you see my screen? Yes, we can see your cool. screen perfectly. Go for it. Okay, again, thanks, Belen, for the introduction. So today we'll discuss about uh, some insights regarding the design of beneficial projects and the risks involved uh, during the bankability. So uh, let me uh, briefly talk about ATA Renewables. Uh, we are an independent advisory firm working in renewables since 2005. We have uh, a total experience that uh, reaches 80 gigawatts and more than 500 projects already financed and successfully constructed. Uh, so it's pretty clear in the industry what is bifacial now. Uh, because this, this technology is around by at least four years for a large scale project. Uh, I would like to talk about uh, today, why should we consider these in Italy too? So first of all, uh, bifacial is becoming mainstream with the gigawatts uh, of installer project worldwide. So the outlook uh, of this technology looks huge. Uh, the main drivers uh, so far have been uh, big tender processes where it's super important uh, being competitive. Also in the last two years, uh, we, have been seen, uh, we have seen a massive increase in innovation, both from modules, as we have just seen uh, with the Francesco presentation, but also from the PV trigger system side. 
So in this context, uh, first part of the presentation will be focused on the technical consideration about the LCOE. Then I will briefly talk about the albedo measurement, which is one of the main concerns uh, when we, we have to see the bankability. So there are several uh, parameters that uh, influence the resulting LCOE, but uh, now we just see three important factors for, at least for Italy, land cost, uh, the module distance, and uh, the ground albedo. In Italy, uh, land cost is uh, historically quite high and uh, also quite volatile. Uh, but to have a full bifacial gain from the module, we need uh, more distance between rows. So this is obviously a kind of risk in terms of uh, land use uh, and higher costs. On the other hand, uh, less distance uh, between uh, rows helps having higher peak power. So finding the optimal uh, geotechnical configuration is a key optimization task. Finally, since uh, uh, the ground albedo is, uh, is very set specific, specific, having uh, an accurate estimation of this is, uh, is crucial to determine the actual SUE. So a takeaway from here is that uh, a strategic and site specific analysis is very important and recommended. In ATA, uh, we help doing that, uh, assessing design and the economic parameters for our clients. But another very important point, in my opinion, is that the clear, clear game changer for the Italian market will be the cost reduction of the models. So the trend uh, so far says that the price gap between mono and uh, uh, bifacial is constantly decreasing and will be at some point uh, uh, close to zero. So this, in my opinion, will compensate the higher capex to do the land acquisition and we finally trigger this technology uh, also for, for the Italian market. So let me now show you some example of uh, how we can optimize the, the LCOE. So the ground uh, coverage ratio, uh, GCR, represents the, the distance we just talked about between trackers. So the higher is the GCR, the less is the land needed for a given array. However, uh, there is a room to optimize this, uh, this ratio and this is provided by the tracker system. So the length of the tracker can be important. Indeed, uh, longer trackers can increase the GCR in the north-south direction. Uh, this is because we have less bearing poles and therefore less spaces between modules in, in the north uh, and south uh, dimension. So this is an option that could be considered. Also, uh, the second point, uh, the selection of the DC cabling arrangement is very important for, for the LCOE. I have an example here. So these two figures show uh, two PV power blocks with same peak power and the same GCR, but two different uh, concept designs. On, on the left, uh, we have uh, underground DC cables using string boxes. Uh, on the right, we have uh, overground solution. So in this case, we have DC, DC harnesses between trackers and DC buses. So in ATA, we have estimated that in terms of CAPEX, uh, the solution, uh, with the solution on the right, we can obtain a reduction in the order of 20-25% only regarding the DC system cabling costs. So we have a cost for, of uh, 0 0.024 US dollar per watt with the underground cablings and uh, we can get uh, something around uh, 0 0.018 US dollar per watt. So this is something that should be uh, considered in a pre-engineering phase. The, the last uh, aspect is the PV tracker configuration. So usually we can have one model per trait uh, per 90 models in row, or we can get uh, a two model per trait in 45 models, so shorter tracker. In case of irregular and hilly sites, and we know that in Italy it's something that we can normally see, shorter trackers allow to better fulfill the available land, getting higher power. So in the, in the right figure, we have a solution with shorter tracker. As you can see, it's not that easy to see, but it is. We can have higher peak power. On the other end, it's completely the opposite in case we have a completely flat uh, solution. So when we have flat terrain, uh, the longer is a tracker, the, the more power we can, we can get. This is because uh, there is a, a distance uh, due to the torque tube gap in the, in the two model portrait solution. 
So there is a consumption blend because of this, uh, this, uh, this gap. So we've seen that uh, there are so many parameters to be considered at pre-planning and or pre-engineering phases. Uh, that's why we do recommend, again, a scenario analysis as a powerful tool to create a cost-effective uh, concept design. So the last part of this presentation, uh, I will uh, be focused on uh, the importance of uh, estimating the albedo. So this aspect is strategic for both bankability and uh, production consideration. So the albedo is defined as uh, uh, the ratio between the reflected irradiance and the GHI, so the global horizontal irradiation. However, measuring it is not that simple. It's not a simple process at all. And uh, this is because the albedo has uh, seasonal and interannual uh, variabilities. So for the estimation of the albedo TMY, there are several factors to be, to be taken into account in, in the calculation. Uh, there are ideally three different ways to do that. So we can do a terrestrial uh, measure, um, we can have the rest of databases with metal station. So these databases are not so recommended because the results are not well representative. We can get satellite data. Uh, they've been around lots of uh, solar databases which provide reliable data, but the accuracy can be in some cases quite, quite high for the bankability and also for the yield estimation. Uh, and finally, uh, we could uh, do on-site measurement with albedo meters. This is uh, um, highly representative uh, and uh, has low uncertainty levels. However, normally it requires long-term campaign and uh, normally it's, uh, it's uh, one year of data to be, to be get on-site. So in ATA, we had the idea to, to match the second and the third uh, options and we obtained the short-term measurement campaigns by the correlation with the, the satellite data. Uh, the method is uh, divided in four steps. So the first two steps uh, are uh, honestly pretty standard. So are just the, the measurement uh, phase. So with the albedo, albedo meter on site, uh, we can put one or more uh, uh, albedo meter depending on the sites uh, of, the, of, the, of the plant. And uh, then uh, we have to do the second phase, the data processing, which is uh, just the data cleaning from outlined the value. So nothing new so far. But the core of this method is the data correction. Uh, data correction from not representative effect. So for example, if we went on site in August, but in July we had an unusual uh, rainy month we know that that uh, measurement uh, was affected by no representative factor, which in this case is the precipitation, but we have lots of uh, factors that uh, can be involved. So that's why understanding unusual effect and correct them from the measurement is very important to, for the calculation of the albedo. Then uh, we, finally, we, we, we have the last step, which is the, the correlation with the long-term solar databases. There are lots uh, around. And uh, we, we, we use uh, lots of the, these um, database available. So uh, what we had to do, we had to validate this method. Uh, let's see now how we did that. So the validation uh, of this method was done in uh, 2019, measuring uh, in a real PV project uh, in, in, uh, in Spain, close to Sevilla. Uh, we measured the albed once per month. Then we started looking at uh, several factors. We checked the 15 satellite databases. Bases. Then we use different extrapolation method. And finally, we use also different correct correction methods. So we obtained something like uh, uh, 70 different methods. We tested them with aim to identify the one that gave us the best result. But what is the, the best result? Best, for best result, I mean the one that provides same albedo TMY, either if we perform the test in January or if we go on site, for example, in August. So this is how we got the ATA method uh, that gives the albedo TMY uh, with the short test campaign, but also with the low uncertainties. We, uh, we calculate the standard deviation of 1.39%. So uh, this figure, this is the last slide for today's. 
And uh, this figure shows some sites where we already performed the albedo. They are around 60 PV projects. And uh, we've also prepared the white paper on this topic. Uh, this is available. I, this is the link where you can uh, easily download it. But anyway, there are also my contact. Uh, feel free to reach me out if you have any, any question. So that's, uh, that's all Belen from my side. Thank you all for your attention. Thank you very much, Andrea. I'm going to take this away. Oh, perfect, you've done it. Uh, just to um, allow uh, Emilio to share his screen. And just to remind everyone, please keep sending your questions. The first questions, the, ba the first batch was already answered by Francesco. And as soon as Emilio is done, then we will take some more, but um, just wanted to make sure that, uh, that you guys know to send them. Uh, Emilio, if you can put that on a large screen, please. Perfect. And remember to take your mute of your microphone so we can hear you. It's at the top. Well, I think on the left hand side. Let me see if I can do it. I might be able to do it. No. No, hang on. Can you, we can't hear you. Can you mute yourself again? Oh, there yeah. we go. Perfect. Okay? Okay, yes, fantastic. perfect. Go ahead. Okay, well, thank you very much, uh, Belen. Uh, um, uh, I'm going to talk about, uh, about uh, how to reduce the LCOE, LCOE from, from the developer's uh, point of view. So first I would like to talk uh, br briefly about PowerTis, and uh, which is the company I'm working for. Uh, um, actually, um, that's correct. So. PowerTis is a, a utility scale developer and an investment platform, which is part of Soltec Power Holdings. Uh, our main um, markets are Brazil, Spain, and Italy. Um, we develop PV uh, projects up to uh, investment ready uh, status, meaning that uh, we'll get all the licenses, CPC negotiated with key components secured, PPA and finance in place. We currently have a, have a pipeline of a six a gigawatt, out of those a one a with PPA. Um, so, uh, as I mentioned, we are part of the Soltec Group, um, and Soltec is, a, is a, a leading trucking manufacturer established in, in 2004. It has a strong presence, uh, international presence, and, and agreements with top tier companies such as Enel, Total, EDF, and, and ISNG, etc. Has a, Soltec has a track record of uh, 8.6 gigawatts and a backlog of 2.1 and um, 1,300 employees worldwide. Um, it's currently the market leader in Mexico and Brazil and second uh, position in Spain and third worldwide. Um, something which is relevant for this presentation is that in 2018, Soltec created Vitec, which is, uh, is uh, the uh, Bifacial uh, Tracker Evolu um, Evaluation Center. It's based in Northern California, and uh, it's a research facility which uh, collaborates with the main module manufacturers, uh, among them Elongi, and, and uh, other entities such as Enrail and the um, RETS and, and other major EPC and consulting firms like uh, Black and Beats. And the main the mission of, of, of Bitech is to assess factors affecting bifacial gain and to create models uh, predicting power generation in any bifacial plan, that's why it's relevant because we will be getting some of the results. Um, actually, Soltec uh, has uh, released several white papers on on, on this uh, research and, and, and studies, uh, which uh, is very easy to, to find. And Soltec white papers, uh, if you Google that, you will be able to find all of them. So that's uh, mainly the, the points that we're going to discuss today. Um, a bit uh, extensive. Uh, so LCOE. The uh, LCO stands, stands for Levelized Cost of Energy. If you Google that, uh, you can see um, many formulas, some very complex, some very simple. The, the, the concept in itself is, is very simple. It's, uh, it's just the average cost of energy throughout the lifetime of, of, of the project. So you see in, in the formula, which is, is working with a net present value because um, um, it's to discount the amounts uh, to today's value. So it's a since we are talking about uh, 25, 30, whatever the years uh, we are considering for, for the life of the, of the, of the project. Um, so 
here is the, how are we going to improve LCOE? So it's either, I mean, this is a, a, um, a division, so it's either we reduce the, the numerator, which is the cost, or we increase the, the generation, which is the denominator. The um, reducing the cost is possible. Um, we are talking about bifacial systems because uh, since we are generating more energy, it's either, I mean, we, we can generate more energy uh, or we can keep the, 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 maintain the energy and then reduce the DC part, which uh, uh, it will end up in reducing cost. But it's, however, it's, 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 it's normally better and more interesting to, to, to increase uh, generation. And that's what we will be discussing today. So this is roughly, I mean, uh, so how are we going to, to uh, reduce? Uh, so let's, uh, let's talk about technology first. So um, um, I mean, the two panelists said before, bifacial modules are, are becoming mainstream worldwide nowadays. Uh, since they provide a, a boost in generation at a, right now at this stage, it's a minimum increase in price, at least for P-type modules. Um, so there are, currently there are three main technologies. Um, so it's P-PERC, um, N-PERC, and, and Heterojunction. So the first one, the P-PERC, is the most common one. It's a, out of the three, is the, it provides the smallest efficiency. Yeah, and like some, as an average, of course, there would be modules that will go beyond that. But, uh, but uh, also they have a, a, the lowest out of the three, the lowest bifacial coefficient because there's some aluminum in, in the backside is still needed. Uh, and that gives you a, a bifacial coefficient between 70 to 80. But the good thing about this uh, technology is that it has a, an amazing price. I mean, it's, it's, it's the best price uh, of the three. Then we have the end perk, which is a medium point. So now it's uh, in, the, in the middle of the, in between the, 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 those two in all aspects. And then you have the terjunction, which is the highest efficiency, highest artificial uh, coefficient between 90 to 95, but also highest price range. So other ways to, for the, in the industry is, um, is, is working you know, to reduce, um, I mean, or increase the, the efficiency is uh, by, for example, uh, working with half cells, which, you halt the, the current and therefore the, you reduce uh, power loss. So with regards to, to, to mod, uh, modules, um, as of today, um, we recommend that uh, uh, in order to minimize the LCOE, um, so uh, the use of paper modules, I think is, uh, we think is the best option. So we now we're going to talk about you know, uh, structure. I'm here in structure, we have the, the two main uh, uh, systems, which is fixed tilt and single axis tracker. So fixed tilt is the best solution for rooftop systems. Um, at the bifacial gain over a monofacial system, it could be up to 15%. And this is with very, very high albedo, so this is made quite technical. And also uh, the rooftops allows for a, you know, uh, good numbers in this respect, because they also, it's easier to, to, to employ, uh, to, to use uh, enhancing materials, a video enhancing materials, which, uh, you know, in the end, it will generate more energy and reduce uh, LCOE over, over monofacial. Uh, for ground mount, mount systems, um, uh, single axis tracker and bifacial modules are, are a clear winner. That's, uh, that's actually, there's no, no much doubt about that. Um, BTEC, as I, I mentioned before, uh, which is Soltex Bifacial Research Center, has performed a, a full a year um, study where a Soltex own 2P tracker uh, achieved a bifacial gain of 15.7% uh, over high albedo conditions and 7.3% over low albedo. Um, also regarding uh, configuration, so um, also um, Andrea mentioned before 1P versus 2P, um, there's another study uh, done by Bitec and they found that uh, 2P outperformed 1P trackers uh, under the same ground cover ratio and albedo by 2.1%. Uh, the main reasons for that is, um, as you can see in the pictures there on the, on the right, uh, is higher modules uh, mean higher wind speeds, and then that's uh, affecting the cooling capabilities um, and, and thermal losses. And then also the space uh, between modules uh, to, uh, to avoid the torque tube uh, shadows 
um, increase also the cooling effects. So in, a, in one way, you can uh, minimize or, or eliminate the, the, the shadow of the torque tube, but also uh, increases the, the cooling effects. Uh, so if you check this, uh, these pictures, you can see um, a thermal image of uh, 1P, where you know the, you, there's, a, the, there's a big difference in, in, I mean, it's in temperature when you compare to the 2P. Uh, and it's basically for the reasons that I mentioned, higher, higher module position, that means higher, higher winds and, and better cooling uh, effect because of the flow. Um, that's, and that's, in the end, that's a, you can get a, a, an increase in production of 2.1%. Uh, so the next uh, uh, part in, in the technology is uh, inverters. Um, so the traditional approach, approach to inverter selection um, uh, will recommend a string inverters below 20, sometimes uh, up to 40 megawatts, but and central inverters uh, beyond that. However, uh, we are seeing how the market is evolving uh, in this perception, and and you know this is a, this is challenge. There has been challenge for lately. Um, uh, it's getting more common to see large projects on 100, 200, even three, and even and 400 uh, megawatts with the stream inverters. Like, like maybe months ago, uh, nobody would, would, would expect. The main reasons for that are a uh, slightly higher generation uh, with stream inverters, uh, but mainly the price reductions um, are eliminating the historical price gap between both technologies. And also a important, very important, is the, that increase uh, in reliability and plug and play design of uh, string technologies. Uh, technology uh, translates into lower uh, O&M. Um, at the same time, central inverters are releasing new concepts, of course, you know, the, it's, uh, research and development is uh, non-stop uh, in this industry, uh, such as liquid uh, refrigeration system, which uh, claim to offer higher efficiency, increasing generation, and therefore reducing LCO. Just an example, an extra 0.5% an extra, uh, in efficiency is equivalent to a, up to 20% inverted capex. So in this regards, and after seeing all this, we, uh, we, um, when selecting inverted technology for larger plants, it's recommended to analyze both technologies without any preconceived opinion that we might have from the past. Um, so, Albedo, uh, I'm not going to, I think I will go through this already because I'm, uh, Andrea did a wonderful presentation regarding Albedo. Um, so, we are going to, now, we're talking about pits um, and the design. So, bifacial systems need higher pits or lower ground cover ratio um, than monofacial ones. So, they, they, they extend the reflex, reflective area, uh, allowing more light to reflect from the ground. Uh, to the backside of the module and also allows for more diffuse light to hit the, the backside. By having a larger pitch, the system um, also benefits from an increased tracking period. In other words, uh, in the morning, back tracking finishes earlier and in the afternoon starts later. That's which, uh, that will also help improving uh, generation. Um, as an example, in, uh, and this is also part of the biotech studies, uh, increasing pits from 9 meter to 12 meter might increase generation from 9.5 to 14.5, considering high albedo values too. Um, and also, yes, more in the real world, for, a, uh, for average albedo values, we have seen like a 1% increase in production um, for every extra meter in pits. Um, Although, of course, this is not linear. So once you get a, low, a, a low, larger uh, pitch, pitch than, than 12 meters, that, that increase uh, minimum, it goes, it goes uh, a bit lower. Um, so I understand that uh, Italy is, uh, is, is, uh, land is, land is, a, is an issue with, uh, in Italy because of cost and availability. But well, if, if uh, in ideal world, a 13 meter pits uh, would be a, a, a really good option for, for biofacial. So now 
it's a, a lower, I mean, uh, with a, a bifacial system also needs a, a lower BCAC ratio than monofacial. And that's because uh, the backside power is not included in the module nominal uh, power. So when you're buying a 400 or 500 or 450 megawatt, sorry, uh, a watt uh, panel, it's not taking into account the, the, the backside power. So therefore, the bifacial modules generate more energy, uh, of course, than, than the equivalent uh, monofacial. And because of this, uh, inverters receive more current than with monofacial, and then they clip more. For that reason, it's recommended to, to go to slow, a slow, uh, lower uh, overbuild or DCAC ratio. So you can see in the graph here on the right, how depending on the albedo, so uh, um, um, it's a recommended one, one ratio or another, for example, with very, very high albedos, even a, a one to one is, a, is recommended. Uh, for a low albedos, you could do between a 1 .5, 115 to 125 maybe. And, and then for monofacial, I mean, the, or at least say 113 is, is that like the reference number. Um, so I have just a couple of, of uh, slides left. Um, so, and this is regarding a uh, PV cyst. I mean, to maximize, maximize generation, uh, it is important to use the right assumptions on PV cyst. Um, one of the first decision is to, to select the right long-term database for your site. There are many options in the market. However, the, most, uh, the two most used uh, ones are Metronorm um, and, and Solar, GIS, Solar GIS. Depending on, on the specific uh, region, um, there might be relevant difference in calculations of yield when using one or the other. And, and that has to be taken into account. Sometimes you find, you know, difference in of 1% and even 2%, depending on, on the geography. Um, and another part, uh, so that's uh, something that, that has to be taken into account. I mean, because one or 2% in, in generation, it uh, means uh, a lot, it has a huge impact in, in the IR of the, of the plant. So another uh, key parameter to consider is the thermal model and thermal losses. Uh, UC and UV represent the linear, uh, a linear function of, of the system thermal losses uh, in PV cyst. Uh, PV cyst considers um, as a default the 29 and zero for those values, meaning that the wind has no cooling effect whatsoever uh, in a plant, which I mean, everybody knows that that's not correct. That's how the system is, is designed, but it's uh, this is not right, you know, uh, uh, with uh, wind will have an, an impact for sure in cooling the plant and cooling the modules and, and, there, there, and that will have an impact on thermal losses and therefore in, in, in generation. Uh, so depending on the tracker design and configuration, um, then the wind, I mean, it will flow easier or, or, or more difficult with, within the modules, cooling them and will have a, a significant impact on, on generation, as I said. Um, and, and that's important, that's very important because thermal losses are the largest losses in, on, on, on a PV system. So sometimes, I mean, depending on, on how, how you handle this, this and, 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 and if you are using the right parameters, you could go from 8% maybe um, a loss um, in, in thermal losses to maybe 4.5 or so, it's, so it's, a, it's, it's very, very important. Uh, also for reassaying, that's another parameter that has to be considered. Um, it's a, so depending, again, once again, depend, depending on the, on the tracker, um, on the configuration, um, and the space, if there's a space uh, to, you know, to allow for the torque tube, um, that's a, that will have affect the real savings. So that's, a, that's important to consider um, a, the, the right values according to, to the, the model that you, or the tracker that you are using. Um, again, very important to calculate the albedo value as a, a, it was discussed in the previous presentation, that's a fundamental. And, and also a, another aspect that sometimes is not taken into account is the positive, incl positive inclination. So again, if you, I mean, if you happen to have a, a, um, um, a project in a, with a positive inclination, you could 
model that into PVCist and you could get a, a, an extra one or two percent uh, of, of production. And finally, regarding just the financial financing fi uh, by facial models, in, in reality, this is quite common to all markets. Um, so, uh, private finance lenders are, are risk averse. So, and uh, they would always prefer a proven technology than the latest state of the art. So, uh, so that's uh, that's important to take into account uh, when choosing modules or you know inverters. Uh, so they, the lenders would like to know that uh, that there is a track record of the technology um, to avoid risks. Um, since the majority of deals are non uh, recourse uh, pre finance, of takers bankability is also um, a key parameter, um, and as well as the PPA contract. And but not only the PPA, but also the EPC contract and all major providers. That's so that's relevant and, and all the I mean it will be audited and, and analyzed by by the by the lenders um, and especially the the resource analysis so um, they will have a they will do a a, a, a big uh, analysis on that and a big uh, audit uh, because of the, the the you know the impact in in, in the economics of the of the of the of the plant uh, and the financial model um, so they will foc they will look at the albedo calculations. Uh, they will they will look at the PVC assumptions. So all these assumptions that we have been discussing later uh, before, sorry, they have to be um, you have to prove uh, you have to justify it. Otherwise, the, the 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 lender advisors will will not take that into account and they will uh, reduce uh, the generation. And roughly, that's uh, all. all my, uh, that's uh, everything on my side. Uh, the Thank you very much, Emilio. Great yes. presentation. It was Thank very you. comprehensive. Thank you very much to the three of you for shedding such light on on bifacial. We have two questions open at the moment, uh, but I, I'd like to start actually. Bolo Dimir kind of asked the question that I wanted to ask you, so I'm going to. Um, he he's asking he says to emilio but i'm going to leave it open to all of you what will be the most cost effective technology for the 2021 2022 years by facial modules p perk n perk or hjt which i don't know what they are hjt oh. so what is your prediction because then i'm going to make that more general for yeah. the next question that yeah. is mine <laughs> okay no i i can i can talk i uh, answer this one we think that uh, even in 2022, it will be uh, PPERC, still the main the main um, product in the market. I mean, it will be uh, followed by uh, heterojection, uh, but it, it all depends on on, on the on evolution of prices. Uh, I mean, right now we are seeing um, again. I mean, this is uh, not easy, but around five cents or so between PPERC and and heterojection. So if this um, gap it reduces, um, probably I mean, uh, Ethereum action will, will start getting the lead, but uh, I, I don't see it for 2022. So for 2022, NPERC is the no, question? No, PPERC, PPERC. PPERC, okay, yeah. PPERC. Would you guys agree on that side? Francesco, I don't know, I mean. We produce PPERC, so totally agree. <laughs> Couldn't agree more. <laughs> I, I, I knew, I knew <laughs> betting girls were, I suppose. And Andrea? Yeah, I, I, I guess uh, I'm totally right with Emilio. So efficiency of the interjection model looks stunning, but uh, as Emilio just said, there is still a gap that uh, I'm, I'm not seeing this uh, new technology coming to large scale PV project in a couple of years time. So, what about bifacial guys? Do you see bifacial taking over, say, more than 50, very significant, so more than fifty percent of the market? by when you know like do you think it's going to get to that sort of level it, it certainly seems but you know um emilio what do you think is it going to be the yeah, main I, bet? I have no doubt absolutely zero doubt i mean what is the point of i mean um, uh, going not going to buy facial right now if uh, the price differential is, is minimum at least as, as i mentioned with people is a uh, so if, even if you don't have this the, the land available and, and you don't capture the whole a uh, benefit of uh, of by uh, by facial uh, because of the, you know a lack of a uh, of pit 
you still have an extra, you know, and, and the price is getting lower and lower, uh, the price uh, gap between mono, uh, mono facial and the facial. So I see it, no, no doubt, absolutely no doubt. But like in what, five years, 10 years? I mean, how? No way, no, 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 no. I mean, I, I, I wouldn't, right now in all our projects, I wouldn't consider mono facial. That's it. So only by facial going forward, then more than, for you it's 100%, but even overall, you'd say like more than 50% of anything oh, yeah. that is being built? Uh, for, yeah, I, I, I would say that, yeah. But you guys, do you have anything to add in there or are you quite happy with that assessment? No, I totally agree because, uh, for example, last year, this year, we have uh, monofacial as main and bifacial as op option. For request of next year, we have bifacial, 100%. The request for the utility scale are bifacial and just some ask for monofacial as option. So it's quite clear that uh, bifacial will take you know, the stage. It's incredible how quickly this, this new sort of technology trends develop, right? It's a, it's a, it's a few months really, like um, uh, they start like establishing themselves and become the main thing. Okay, so what question here to Puertes? Sorry, Andrea, go for it. No, just to, to add that it's not, uh, my view is that it's not a new technology, it's just a different configuration of the, of the material. Okay. So it's already in some way, we can say robust. And uh, yeah, so price-wise, uh, we are ready here. We are ready in uh, the bifacial era in my view. So all the main uh, tender worldwide are, with, uh, are proposed with, uh, with bifacial and uh, large-scale uh, PV plants, uh, very large-scale like in Australia. Almost all of them now are, in, are with bifacial model and they're already yeah. financed uh, by, by, ten, by lenders. Yeah, let me add that um, uh, also thanks to a company like us that has bring this to a very large scale production, the gap between the gap in terms of prices between monofacial and bifacial leads. Nothing. <laughs> I have to say, if you, especially if you compare with the, all the advantage you can have uh, on the on the field, you know, it's really, yeah, no. we will totally. use it a lot in the in the recent times. No, I, I think Andrea, you've made a good point that this is not new technology in the sense that it's not a new cell. It's not. I I get that, but like, when was the first full project of bifacial? Because you have to redesign, think everything through differently, you know, take into consideration a bit. And what was the first plan finished? Like what two years ago? I don't even think it's a it's a big, very fast change. Actually, actually, I think the first one was in Chile, um, in 2015. Stand and I think, corrected. Yeah, yeah, and I think I think Soltec did the, the uh, was the, the actually the main the first uh, tracker to specifically design um, a track, the, the tracker for for bifacial. It was uh, La Silla, I believe it's called, it was called in, in Chile. No, fair enough. If it's been five years, then it's something that is it's a lot quicker than I thought. Okay, here, to power this, what is the effect of the torque tube shadows, uh, 1V versus 2V configuration? Oh, we just lost the okay. thread. Yeah. Okay, so, um, so with, uh, with one, uh, uh, 1V, um, the, the, sh the, the, the torque tube is, is going to project a shadow. That's no way to, to avoid that. And you can uh, separate a bit more the, the tube and try to avoid, uh, in a way, it a bit the, the shadow, but the shadow is going to be there. Uh, with the 2P, um, it's uh, um, because of the, the gap that uh, at least the, the, the Soltec uh, tracker has in between uh, uh, modules, um, that, uh, that shadow uh, doesn't exist. Actually, I mean, whoever is interested, can, can uh, download this uh, white paper I was saying before, and, and that's an analysis. And you know, the, the, the white paper recommends uh, specific uh, values for, for shadowing, um, which I, I mean, it's, uh, it's very curious to, to see that uh, there is almost no, 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 no shadow. Thank you very much, Emilio. I'm trying to see if we can recover Andrea because there's a question for it, but we'll see what we can manage. It's a question, another question here that says, competitors say that 1P row for testing, the temperature uh, is in the wind shadow of the higher 2P rows. It's the first one, Anonymous says. Competitors say that the 1P row for testing the temperatures is in the wind shadow of the higher 2P rows. Can you share the layout on Soltex Bitex site? Yeah. 
Just, I don't know. Maybe, maybe it was just like, I don't know what he refers to either. I don't know whether it's a, a, a very technical thing or whether it's just one word missing. Let's go to the next. Uh, can we consider two landscape configuration? I don't, I don't know if I understand that one either. I'm sorry, and not my best at the moment. I'm just trying to recover uh, Andrea here. What type of module cleaning to, uh, you, do you propose during the O&M period? This is a very, very co common question. You know, do you clean the rear of the cells? Do you not? So perhaps yeah. you can answer that. Well, it depends on, on, the, on the market. Um, there are some markets where, like, uh, for example, in Brazil, um, technology is quite expensive. So it's a, and labor is not so much. So it's a very much focus on, on, on labor. Uh, other uh, markets like in Europe, it's more uh, you use machines. Um, you know, it, uh, regarding the, the how often it depends on the site also, mm. you know, how the soiling is performing. Um, and also one very question that uh, many people ask is a difference between uh, how often do you clean the, the front or, or the back side. Um, we think that, um, I mean, again, depends on the, on the site, but uh, you don't need to clean the, the, the back side as, as often as, as the, the front side. Thank you very much. And we're covered, Andrea. So um, we're going to be asking the question. Okay, Andrea says, uh, if we don't have time to do an on-site measurement, what kind of data we can use for an estimation in PVCs, satellite long-term data with some variability from meteor provider as solar judges. So how can you manage that? Yes, so normally, so first of all, our, our method, uh, as uh, I mentioned in my presentation, doesn't require uh, many time. So it can be done in uh, two, three days, depending on of the sites of the, of the, of the, of the project. Uh, but uh, obviously, if, we, if it's not possible to do the, the site measurement, uh, uh, we do normally use uh, uh, one of the, the famous, uh, as also Emilio mentioned, so like Meteorom or Solar JS, would be, would be fine, uh, considering that the accuracy uh, is a bit higher than uh, a, a methodology like uh, ours, where we, where we have... Uh, a match between uh, satellite and site uh, uh, measurement. And last, guys, the question is, what are the LCOE costs you expect for the future of bifacial PVs? It's a very good question. Uh, so are they going to go down? I imagine so, but, but how much, you know, how much are we gaining by going bifacial? Do you guys want to do like a, a little bit, you know, just throw a figure in the air? I, I don't know about numbers. Uh, it's definitely going down because prices uh, are, are going down. Uh, uh, that's uh, how the market is performing. We don't know what's going to happen in in, in a year, but uh, for the I mean for the next twelve months, I, I expect the prices to to go down. So that will uh, pull the LCOE down for sure. Francesco. Yeah, we saw also in my presentation that the price are going down for sure. We are working as module manufacturers to, you know, improve the efficiency of the modules and to reduce the, the cost. So I'm also seeing the price are going down. On the specific number, it's difficult to say because, you know, it changes a lot depending. So if you ask now, for example, we have a very, you know, uh, crazy market also in Italy. So it's difficult to, to say, but um, it changed and it's also changed quite quickly, but going down for sure. That's the trend. Cool. Andrea, do you want to add anything there? Yeah, for sure. Prices are going down, but uh, just I wanted to highlight that there's a room for uh, lowering the LCOE during the, the engineering phase, the pre engineering phase. So, so, as we've seen in our presentation, also from Emilio's side, it was honestly great. There are so many parameters that should be take into consideration during the, the pre-planning or pre-engineering phases. And uh, this is, uh, I think, this is the key factor for the next period for uh, developer in general. Yeah, it sounds like the PV race isn't done. 
you know, we thought for ages because the prices have come down so quickly, so fast, we thought, okay, so quickly, so, so steeply, we thought, okay, you know, we're coming to an end where, you know, but it doesn't sound that way. We're, we're seeming to be able to find new ways of saving more money, you know, of making them more efficient. So it's by facial, sounds like going forward. So thank you very much all of the people in the audience for being here today about talking about by facials in Italy. And especially thank you for our experts for being here. Emilio, thank you very much. Thank Francesco, you very thank you very much. And Andrea, thank, thank you very you. much for sharing with us. And uh, hopefully, I, I hope you guys, I see you at the next time and I hope that you've learned a lot as much as I have. See you. Thanks everybody. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye.